Deep Dive a la carte. This would be Ron Polk's Tool Cubby number one, if I remember the plans correctly. So this is my lower tool cubby. In his smart trailer, he actually has three banks of cubbies. I do not have the height to support three banks, and so I have two. So I have D or the Tool Cubby one, and that up there would, I guess, be his equivalent Tool Cubby three, maybe. Uh, in any, anyway, the dimensions on this. So if you were to look, you know, deep in, what are you looking at? Well, this thing is... 14 inches tall from countertop up to uh, the base or up to the top of the cabinet. It is 87 inches long going from this point all the way to the back. I wanted to have counter space and I wanted to have the butane or storage and so that's why I made it that size instead of maybe going the full 96. It was worth it to me to have this and not have just an extra place for a couple of tools. And it is also 14 inches deep. So 14 tall, 14 deep and 87 long. It was made uh, using a router to route out all of these slots. Every slot there is two inches apart on center, I believe, which allows for these quarter inch pieces to actually move and swap out. How I can swap out all of these partitions is by taking the screws out from this quarter by or three quarter by three quarter piece of plywood, which basically functions as a retainer for the tools so they don't slide out. And I have rarely had any issues with my tools, although I do have bumpier roads, so every once in a while I'll get a tool that will come out. But otherwise, uh, three quarter by three quarter stop, and you take those screws out, that pulls, and then all of these slots can be moved around. I do have active supports right here. That's actually a three quarter by three quarter fixed support there, and also one right there as well and that keeps it from having any dip uh, because of the weight of the top cabinet. All right so in these tool cubbies I'm able to put tools uh, oftentimes too deep take advantage of the space that I have so the first one is all about flashlights my 18 volt gooseneck and my 20 volt LDD. This and the next cubby are set up the same I have a hammer drill in the back and I have an impact driver here and the same setup here, hammer, dr hammer drill, impact driver. In this, I actually have a power screwdriver and then the right angle 18 volt drill, except I do have the 20 volt adapter kit on it. And my third and final impact driver. I have two of my old 18 volt tools. They are not hammer drills. In this cubby, I have a relatively new 20 volt drywall gun and I bought it as a kit and so I ended up getting the uh, drywall trimmer as well. And up in here I take advantage of magnets and that would be bits for my laminate trimmer. So I, basically if I can I try and keep um, extra materials with the tools themselves. That way I know that I have them and can find them. Uh, cordless router. Uh, I like that router. I would like to have a second one. Here's my multi-tool with just a couple of grab-and-go blades, but I have a ton of blades. And this is my relatively new jigsaw. Barrel grip, really having a good time with it. And right now it currently has the Collins coping foot installed because the last time I used this, I was doing crown molding and I was having to do the coping. And so I tried that. Liked it. I just need to practice. This is a pride and joy of mine. I have a track saw. Love uh, track saws. Had a chance to use a couple of different brands. Whatever the track saw is, I'm a fan of it. I happen to have DeWalt, of course. Uh, no real place in any of my drawers to use sandpaper, and so I'm able to use cubbies for boxes of it, so kind of big storage, and then cut sheets. That would be simply a Power T50 stapler. Here are some of my uh, air trim guns. The That would be a... 23 gauge pin and then an 18 gauge stapler and an 18 gauge uh, brad nailer. Over here I would have another 18 gauge, uh, matter of fact two because I just got a new one, uh, won it in a raffle, and then uh, one of my two 16 gauge. This would have a grinder except the grinder actually was loaned out today. So there are my tool cubbies for my small tools really happy with this and whatever next trailer I do will certainly have this bank and this bank in a longer trailer will actually go a full 96 and I'll take advantage of a full sheet of plywood on that 
because I do really like the uh, the methodology and the design behind this. I think this is just a genius design, whether Ron came up with it or it's been existing and he just popularized it. Either way, I am very happy with that. Okay, picking this up with, I believe, what Ron would call Tool Cubby 3 or TC3. Uh, Ron in his smart trailer actually has a middle uh, set of... Uh, tool cubbies, very much like the top set. It's it's a combination of the depth of the top with the height of the bottom, and so you get deep and short, and then you get deep and tall. And I just have the deep and tall. So what are the dimensions? Well, from uh, the top down to the bottom there, out to out at 16 inches tall. I have mine from that edge all the way to the end. It is 67 and one half inches. Again, out to out. Depth-wise, because it actually matches up with my battery bank or uh, my battery charging station there, it is also then 20 inches deep. Uh, I'm able to take advantage of magnets, and so you'll see a lot of uh, extra accessories to the tools kind of suspended on magnets, and they do not come down. I've had good luck on the internet finding really strong uh, rare earth magnets. Okay, so with this tool cubby, like down below, all of these slots are at two inches on center, except for, of course, that's slightly bigger than two inches because I was just running, uh, running to the end. But otherwise, they're two inches on center, all done with a quarter inch router bit, upcut spiral, and I used a template. So that means all of these partitions actually will move. And here again, if I take uh, for the uh, uh, restraining lip here, the uh, basically the passive restraint guard, so this can't fall out, and it doesn't, by the way, uh, that uh, if I take these screws out, this piece comes right off, and then I can move all of these around and rearrange the thing and, and accommodate new tools, old tools, or just a rearrangement of useful tools. Okay, so what do I have in here? Well, the tools really quickly, uh, this would be saws. So, 20 volt circular. Corded $50 IOB set up to cut masonry, extra saw blades, and of course the accessory saw guides. Here would be my two sawzalls. I have one corded, one cordless, and grab and go blade. Here I have two power planers, a relatively new cordless DeWalt, some accessories of course, and then I have a corded Bosch that I like a lot because it has that uh, dust bag that really catches a lot. Here I have, uh, oh, what is this? I guess this is a joist drill or kind of one of those narrow hole hogs. It's really long, but it's one of those 60 volt flex and I haven't been able to dog that thing down yet. So I have that, I have a corded Milwaukee hammer drill, and then I have one of those DeWalt mixing drills where it has high, tor high torque, low speed. Really happy with that. I have a variety of extras uh, and accessories for all of these right in there. Cordless vacuum cleaner. And this is the mid-size DeWalt cordless vacuum cleaner. They have a small one, uh, a large one that's twice the size of this, and then the middle size, which really works very well for me, and just whatever accessories I have with that. In order to accommodate rearranging when I got this, and down here in the smaller cubby when I got that, I actually took everything out and rearranged it all. And then I came up with this idea here, because I was pretty full on the top, to accommodate this in a cubby, I created basically just a partition shelf. So that just slides in there. It's not held in there permanently. If I take these off or, or sanders out at the top, I can just lift this and pull it. Otherwise, it accommodates my two palm sanders, my orbital, and then just an old uh, kind of a weekender belt sander that I've had for years that just won't die so I can continue to use it. And that allowed me to double up so I could do that. In my last cubby here, I simply have my uh, framing nailer and I have my roofing nailer and a palm nailer and then there's going to be some pneumatic oil in the back just like all around in here I typically have pneumatic oil as well as manuals so if I have an issue I can actually do manuals and whenever I have uh, tips and I can buy extra tips for my nailers then I actually buy extra tips so, uh, you know, other than just temporary storage here, you know, of these uh, clamps, those are my bins. 
up on top of these bins, I have a bilge pump that I use. It's kind of a manual bilge pump for a small boat. I use that when I change out toilets to actually empty the tank and to empty the bowl, of course, after flushing it several times to make sure I'm emptying clean water, as clean as it can be. I had no place for my new belt sander belts, and I have a bunch of them because I did a hardwood floor that was small enough to where I could not actually do uh, a uh, drum sander, and so I just have them up there for right now. And on screws, I have a straight edge, and my fish stick lives up there as well. And up on top here, I have a fish tape. And all of this, the cabinet ends there, and this is simply uh, one of those three-quarter by three-quarter edgings to keep whatever's up in here actually from sliding out or from sliding off. And that is consistent with all of these. Here's that lip. Here's that lip. Here's that lip, and that is very consistent with these uh, shelving. There you have it. It is the Tool Cubby 3.